Welcome. On this video, we will be discussing the idea of the angles within a triangle and the exterior angle theorem. When it comes to angles, there are two classifications that we can have. We can have interior angles and we can have exterior angles. Let's discuss interior angles first. So here we have an illustration of a triangle. So here we have a triangle. Let's call it ABC. And the interior angles are the angles inside the triangle, which in this case, that will be this angle A, and that will be this angle B, and that will be this angle C. What is one characteristic about this? Well, one property that we have when it comes to interior angle is that the sum of the angles is equal to 180 degrees. That is, if I look at the value for angle A, and I look at the value for angle B, and I look at the value of angle C, that would always be equivalent to 180 degrees. Now let's visualize this. Let's take a look at this illustration. So here notice that we have a triangle and the interior angles are shown in red, blue, and green. And on the right hand side, we have a semicircle, which you can kind of see them as a straight line. Notice that if I add the blue, the red, and the green angle, that's equivalent to 180 degrees, aka a semicircle. What's going to happen if I play around with the dimensions of my triangle? So let's say I increase the value of the interior angle in red. If I make it closer, now it's 90 degrees. Notice that all that happens is that it just take a, now the red color, it just takes a bigger portion of the semicircle, but I still get a total of 180 degrees. Will that be the case if I move around the green interior angle? That's fine. Perhaps I take a smaller section of how I was, but now the summation, it is still 180 degrees. And it doesn't matter how I redefine my triangle my summation, it is still going to be equivalent to 180 degrees. I'm always going to end up with the semicircle. So now let's discuss the second type of angles, and that is the exterior angles. So let's start by identifying our triangle. So here we have our triangle, ABC. Now, what would happen if I look at the vertices of this triangle, A, B, and C, and I extend the lines that define this triangle. So here I extend that line, here I'm extending this line, and here I'm extending this line. But by doing that, notice that I have created some angles, which in this case, that would be this angle right here, that would be this angle right here, and that would be this angle right here. And that is what we refer to as the exterior angles within a triangle. The property that these angles have is that if I, if I were to sum up their value, so the sum of these exterior angles, now that value is going to be equivalent to 360 degrees. Now let's look at this illustration to understand what's going on here. So here notice that we have a triangle. And in green, we can see the exterior angles. Now, what would happen if we shrink this triangle? Take a look at what's going to happen to the exterior angles shown in green. So there it is. Notice that we create a full circle. We have a total sum of 360 degrees. So let's just keep rolling this. Notice that that's my triangle, and if we shrink that same triangle, the summation will be equivalent to 360 degrees because the exterior angles actually create a full circle. Now let's summarize this. So if I add the interior angles, I create a line. And if I add the exterior angles, I create 
a circle. So this is how we can identify them. And these are the properties that come within this type of angles. Now let's discuss another idea. And that is the idea of the exterior angle theorem. What this theorem says is the following. So if I identify my triangle, here we have it again. Here we have my triangle ABC. Notice that there is an angle that is outside of this triangle. Let's call this angle D. What this property says is that if I identify the two interior angles that are not next to the exterior angle, which in this case is angle C and angle A, if I add the value of angle A and I add the value of angle C, well, that's always going to be equivalent to the value of angle D. The exterior angle will always be equivalent to the sum of the two interior angles that are opposite in position. But why? Well, we can explain this real quick. So why is this true? We know two things. We know that if I add the value of the interior angles, so in this case, that will be ABC, that's equivalent to 180 degrees. So angle A plus angle B plus angle C, that is equivalent to 180 degrees. In addition, I also know that if I add angle B and angle D, that is also 180 degrees. Angle B plus angle D plus angle D, that is also equivalent to 180 degrees. So now notice that I have a system of equation. I have two equations which are equal to 180 degrees. So I can kind of set them equal to each other, which in this case, I will have angle A plus angle B plus angle C that is equivalent to angle B plus angle D. Well, what would happen if we subtracted angle B to both sides? So angle B cancels here. Look at what we have now. Angle A plus angle C that's equivalent to angle D, which is essentially the conclusion that we stated previously. The summation of the two interior angles is equivalent to the exterior angles. And this is what we refer to as the exterior angle theorem. So let's take a look at some examples now, now that we have stated this. Let's start by looking at this example right here. We have a triangle. So let's identify that. Notice that here we have our triangle. And the objective is to find out the value of angle J K M. So where is that? J K M is equivalent to this angle that we have here. J K M. Well, what do we notice? J K M angle J K M is an exterior angle. What do we know about this situation? Well, I also know the value of two interior angles. But now notice that those interior angles are opposite of the exterior angle, and we have a relationship between them. I know that if I add the interior angles, which in this case, angle J plus angle L, that is going to be equivalent to the exterior angle, which in this case, that would be J, K, M. Now let's plug in the expression that we have for each other. Angle J is X. Angle L is 70. Angle JKM is 2x minus 5. And now notice that we have a system of equations. I'm sorry, not a system of equation, but just a straight equation. Now we can just apply algebra to find the value. Let's solve for x. So perhaps the first thing that I want to do is like, let me take away x. By doing that, I have 70 equals 2x minus 5, which let me just flip this over. 
So let me just write this down as x minus 5 equals to 7. And at this point, all that needs to be done is add a 5 to it. I know what's the value of x, which in this case is 75. And do not get confused. This does not mean that the angle JKM is equivalent to 75. Now I know what x is. Now let's figure out what JKM is. So angle JKM is equivalent to the expression 2x minus 5. But we know what x is. So let's just plug that in. 2 times 75 minus 5. So that's equivalent to 150 minus 5, which is 145. So there we have it. We know what the value of the angle JKM is. It is equivalent to 145. But notice what we did here. We apply the angle exterior theorem. Let's look at one more example here. In this example, the objective is to find out what's the value of angle one. And what we are being given is a triangle. And in addition of that, we know that the expression for this interior angle is 3x, the expression of this interior angle is 40, and we have an expression for this exterior angle right here. We know that there's a relationship, and that is if I add both of my interior angles, that is equivalent to the exterior angle. And now this becomes an algebra one question, and then we can solve for it. So let's see. The first thing that I will do is I will take away 3x. Now that that's gone, I have 40 equals 2x minus 10. Let me actually flip this over. So 2x minus 10 is equal to 40. It's just easier. So continuing by solving for x, let's add 10. And now I have that 2x is equal to 50. And if I divide by 2, my value for x is of 25. Now, this does not mean that the angle 1 is equivalent to 25, because I can see that if I would have added angle 1, and if I would have added the expression 5x minus 10, I create a line which is 180 degrees. So if I add an angle 1, and if I add the expression 5x minus 10, I will be creating a line. So I can see that they're supplementary. I can set it up this way. And we can solve for, for angle 1, because now we know what x is. x is 25. So we have angle 1 plus 5 times 25 minus 10. It's 180. Let's solve for this. Angle 1 plus 125 minus 10. That's equal to 180. Let's combine these two terms. So here we have angle 1 plus 115 equals 180. And now to get angle 1 by itself, we take 115 and that will give me a value of 65. Angle 1 is equivalent to 65, which is what we were looking for. Hello, if you would like to continue to learn about mathematics, you can check out the videos on the left. 